Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to show you how I made these four projects using a single stamp set from iCrafter. I hope you'll stick around and find out more. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Last month, I stopped by with a special video using this iCrafter Dash Circles die set to create a few cards. I will pop a picture of those up on screen now, and if you would like to see how I created those cards, that video will be linked in the description box below. Well, iCrafter reached out to me and wanted to know if I wanted to pick a couple of their products and be a guest artist in August and September. And like I mentioned last month, I said, of course. Well, for today's video, I'm going to be using this stamp set on the left called Leaves Are Falling to create four different cards. Now, you might notice today is Friday and I'm creating four cards. This is part of my Four on Fridays series. Now, in the past, this was a collaboration that I did with my friend Danny. But if you are in education, you know that when that school year starts back up, it gets crazy. So Danny has decided to join me in the summers for this series. Now, maybe from time to time during the school year, she will as well. But for now, it will just be me trying to show you on an occasional Friday how to create four different projects using the same product, technique, or tool. If you want to see more videos in this series, I do have the playlist as well linked in the description box. Like I mentioned, the main focus today will be this stamp set, but I'm going to do lots of different techniques and use some other products. As I add those in, I will let you know what they are, but as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below or email me at the address at the bottom of the description box. Let's get crafty! Before I get to today's process video, I do have a special channel member shout out. I would like to say thank you and welcome to Paper Trimmer Level Membership to Nancy Byram. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you as well to all of my channel members. And if you're ever interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, I do have a link in the description box below. Let's get to the projects. Because I have been in a fall mood lately, I will be focusing today on the three leaves from the stamp set as well as the sentiments. But you'll see there are a couple other images as well on the stamp set that would make great cards. For this first one, I'm going to use this leaf here that I've chosen and I will be stamping it randomly on this piece of ivory cardstock in three different colors. Now for this first round where I'm using, you know, like the outline or the veins of the leaves, I do have to clean it between each stamp because I change the colors. I keep doing that cleaning, stamping, cleaning, stamping until that whole piece of cardstock is filled with leaf images. To kind of color in the leaves, I am going to be using the reverse side of the stamp, which will give me a solid leaf image. And because sometimes solids are a little splotchy, I did put some Versamark onto the back of the stamp before I inked it up with the color. Now when I inked it up, because I'm using a little cube, I did go over it a few times to try to avoid lines, and then before bringing it to my piece of cardstock, I stamp off on the piece of paper and you'll see there it just gives a nice colored shadow. Now luckily this round I can stamp all of the greens and then clean off between kind of the red and the mustardy color. And here's a look at all of those stamped in.
For my sentiment, I chose leaves are falling, autumn is calling from the stamp set, and I'm going to use that green ink on a scrap of ivory cardstock. I found a die that I had in my stash and it will cut out the sentiment on the inner part and then out of this green scrap of cardstock I am going to be cutting a frame. Before I add the sentiment I brought in my trimmer and I cut one eighth of an inch off all edges. Now I could have cut like a quarter of an inch off the top and then the side but I like the way that all of the leaves were centered so that's why I chose an eighth off all sides. Then I brought in my glue and added adhesive to the back of the sentiment and to the frame and you'll notice that I have it falling off the right side just a little bit. I set that to the side to dry for about 10 minutes before I brought in my scissors and cut off the excess. Off camera, I used that same green cardstock to cut and fold a top fold card base, and I cut a piece of ivory cardstock for the inside just so the personal message was easier to see. I placed my sentiment piece onto the front centered, and then placed that piece of ivory cardstock on the inside. To finish this card off, I brought in my glitter dots, which have a gold border and a clear glittered center, and I placed three on the card front. And here's a look at that finished card. For card number two, I am going to be using all three leaf images from the stamp set. I will be stamping with Versamark ink and using detail white embossing powder. I am stamping onto Strathmore Bristol Smooth that is cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. And when I do my leaves or when I stamp them, I am putting them in the lower left hand corner. Now you'll see I kind of have to move that paper back and forth because it was hard to see where those were stamped. But once I had all three done, I brought in my tray poured on my powder and then I heat set that with my heat tool. You can see the white just a little bit better now. I will be using the emboss resist technique for this card and I am ink blending starting in the lower left hand corner using the same three inks as card number one. Now while I work on that blending I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. These are just fun little questions that we get to know each other a little bit better. Today's question is another one from a channel member and Karen C and I would like to know when you are crafting do you sit or stand? You can let us know in the comment section below and don't forget to include the hashtag hashtag QOTV so we know you've answered and would like us to see it. For me, I do stand up now about 90% of the time that I am crafting. I did used to sit, but when we rearranged my studio, I did go to a standing desk. This because I was crafting so much and down here, it just gets me up and on my feet more. Now when I do my video editing, I do usually sit in my stool at my desk. After all of the ink blending was done, I brought in a paper towel and cleaned off where the embossing is just to make those white leaves stand out a little bit better. I do want this piece to have a green mat, so I cut it down to three and three quarters inches wide by five inches tall, and then I brought in a scrap of green cardstock and cut a mat for that that was just slightly larger. Now I will be using for my sentiment this tag die, and because it won't be seen anyway, I'm gonna cut it out of the middle of my green mat, and I also cut one from craft cardstock. Now this craft cardstock is going to be the one I stamp on and I will once again be using Versamark with the detail white embossing powder. I set this up in my Misty and just placed that tag in the lower right hand corner and once the powder was on there I heat set that and now it's time to get the card finished. I matted my inked piece with the green cardstock and then these two layers got adhered to the front of a craft card base. Now for the inside I did want to add a little decoration and use Versamark in a little bit different way. Instead of embossing I'm going to use it as a watermark ink. 
So I inked up one of the stamps from the front and just stamped in the lower right hand corner of the inside. This just adds a little bit of interest. For this sentiment, I adhered those two tags together, just a little bit offset, and then I placed them in the upper right hand corner in some of that white space. Once again, to finish this card off, I brought in my glitter dots, and this time I used almost the smallest ones. I placed one at the top of the tags, and then four scattered around the rest of the card front. And here's a look at that finished card. For card number three, I decided to go with a mini slimline and I cut a piece of ivory cardstock to five and three quarters inches wide by two and three quarters inches tall. Now I spent some time arranging those same three leaves from the last card onto the piece of cardstock. It did take a little bit of time, but I eventually got them where I wanted them. Then I inked them up with Versamark once again, but this time for the embossing, I use Detail Gold. I just like the extra shine it gives and it kind of has a fall feel to it as well. Now you'll notice that even though I did use my embossing buddy beforehand, I did have a small piece of the powder left on the cardstock where it shouldn't be, so I wiped that off with a dry brush before bringing in my heat tool to set that powder. To color in these leaves, I'm going to be using some tri-blend markers. I chose a red, kind of a mustardy yellow, and a green. Now I won't be doing any shading on these, but for each color I did use a different shade of the marker. For the red I used the light, the yellow I used the dark, and the green I used the medium. I just colored in each little section and you'll notice that once I have finished half of the leaf in one color, I do the other half in the second and then I start the next leaf in the same color that I switched to on the first. I just thought that this kind of reminded me of leaves changing colors and it added something to the front of the card. Off camera, I created an ivory slimline card base that when it's folded, it measures six and a quarter inches wide by three and a quarter inches tall. I also cut a scrap of kind of a maroon or burgundy color cardstock to map my first piece with, just bringing out a little bit more of that red. I placed those two together and then adhered them to the card front. Originally, I was going to leave this card without a sentiment, but when I had the layers together, I decided that I did want to go ahead and add one to the front. Now this isn't always the best choice because if you mess up the sentiment, you kind of mess up the card. But luckily the sentiment I chose, it fit right between two of the leaves, and I did ink it up a couple times to get a nice dark red, but it did stamp well. Thumbs up for that one! For my final project, I created a set of three monochromatic cards, but today I'm just going to show you how I did one and then I just repeated it for the other two. This first one will be craft, so I did pre-cut and pre-score a craft card base. Then I laid out my leaf and my sentiment centered on the card front. Once that was all in place, I inked it up with craft ink and I did end up inking this up and stamping it three times because I really wanted to make sure that the craft colored ink stood out because you'll see here in just a little bit, I'm going to do some ink blending as well and I wanted the image and the sentiment to be darker than the blending. Once the card front had been stamped, I then brought in some masking tape and I stamped the image once again onto that. Now this I only had to stamp once because I just needed to be able to see it to cut it out. After it was cut out, I placed it on the card front in the same place as the stamped leaf and then it is time to do some ink blending. I will again be using the craft ink and then my neutrals blending brush and I start kind of on the leaf and just spread out the ink from there in a circular motion. When I think that I have good coverage and that you'll be able to tell the difference between 
the background and the inked area. I stop ink blending and I pull off the mask. And you'll see here that it just reveals a lighter leaf below with just kind of an aura or a halo of color. Off camera, I repeated this same process for the other two cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.